Hi, I'm Dan Augusto with GearWire.com, and you're watching Engineering 101. Uh, this is part four in our series about convolution reverb. And in this video, as opposed to the last video, uh, where we took an impulse response of this room, we're going to be taking impulses of things you wouldn't normally think of taking impulses of. The great thing about convolution reverb is that it just doesn't do reverb. It can also give you sort of a feeling of, of being in like a tiny space, for example. Uh, you can also put impulse responses uh, in, through uh, distortion pedals and things like that. And we'll, we'll see what that does and see if it actually, in fact, works. But first up, let's try a very small space. And this isn't really a reverb. It's also actually more of a, a filter or, or a frequency response curve that the convolution does to it. So what I've done is I've taken a shoebox and I've uh, put a little hole in it uh, using a razor and uh, stuck a microphone cable into it. So what I'm going to do is take our Earthworks microphone and just plug it in here. Now what I've done is I put some bubble wrap on the inside so that the uh, mic doesn't jiggle around too much. I just uh, put it in there, close the box, and just actually just stick it right in front. This is our, our Mackie HR824 speaker, and you just stick it right in front of that. Okay, so once again, we see our sign sweep on track one, and we're uh, armed on track two. That's where the Earthwork mic is. We're going to send out the sign sweep through our speaker right into the box. For a lot of impulses, there's excessive amounts of low frequency energy. So what I've elected to do is before I export, I'm putting uh, this linear phase EQ on here and just putting a, uh, the filter around 100 hertz. And that'll make sure we don't get any unwanted rumble effects when we uh, put, load it into our convolution program. I'm going to call this one shoebox and save it in the same place I've saved all of our other sign sweeps. So once again, in Space Designer, I'm going to hit deconvolution, choose my shoebox sign sweep, point out my test tone, and save the IR. Unlike the room response we made in the last video, with this type of effect, uh, we just want to listen to the wet signal without any of the dry mixed in. So let's take a listen first to our dry signal. We're going to listen to Ultra Beat again. I'll start that up. There's the direct signal. And now I'm going to start to turn up our effect. So it's kind of giving it that weird resonance at the, you know, the shoebox frequency. Okay, so next up, we're going to take a response of the Vox over the top boost from the Cooltron line of pedals. Okay, so now we're ready to record with the pedal. The only problem is I want the pedal at a setting that sounds good. So what I'm going to do is actually run the drums through it, find a setting before I run the sine sweep. I'm going to find a setting that I like. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to run the sine sweep through it. I'd recommend turning down your monitors when you do this. All right, so let's fast forward a little bit. I've already exported the IR and taken out some of the uh, low frequency energy using that filter. And I've already deconvolved it and loaded it into Space Designer. So let's listen to our dry signal in Ultra Beat again. I'll take that down and bring up what's supposed to be our distorted signal. Well, that's definitely not distortion. I actually kind of like what it's doing. But unfortunately, the convolution reverb cannot encode distortion. It's doing more of a filter thing to it, really. Well, let's move on to something else that convolution actually can do. Our next victim, <laughs> our next victim is the Ibanez 8080 analog delay. This is a vintage pedal from the 70s. So let's plug it in. All right, the pedal's plugged in, and I have it on a long delay setting with a good amount of feedback. So 
So since drums aren't the most appropriate thing to put through a delay pedal, I've chosen a guitar sample. And I've chosen to set it up in a certain way. I have Space Designer first in the chain, kind of like where you would have a guitar pedal, uh, followed by a compressor, uh, a guitar amp simulator, and then a limiter just to make sure we don't clip too much. So now we'll listen to our guitar sample uh, without any reverb. All right, I'm gonna turn up our uh, reverb or delay as it is in this case. All right, so the convolution did a good job in capturing uh, the delay effect. The only problem is uh, that the delay is way too long. Um, well, actually, uh, co most convolution reverbs, all of them that I've worked with, uh, give you an option to change the length of the sample. So doing that will effectively uh, change, the, um, change the time of the delay effect. In perfect space, the uh, sample length control is located right here on the left side of the plugin. And as you can see, it displays our length. It's 1.770 seconds. So I'm going to turn that down a bit. Let's try turning it down to about point, point 0.5 seconds. This is actually point 0.496, but we can round that up. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing. Start with the dry signal, and I'll slowly turn up the delay effect. Dry. And here comes our delay. So that's a lot more appropriate. So thanks for tuning into these videos, and make sure to keep checking back because we're going to make all of the responses that have been created in this series available for free download, and we might actually uh, try to get a few extra ones in there for fun. So thanks for tuning in.